really honored to be here. I feel, having listened to the other speakers, world traveler, adventurer, doctor, world traveler, doctor, <laughs> genius, doctor, <laughs> and those that after me, no less. So I think of a diamond in a rough. I'm a rough in the diamonds. I live up the street, I walked here. <laughs> oh, and that's my hand. There seems to be a theme. But thank you. Um, it's a great honor to share a story. This is a true story. I have changed the names and the details to protect the privacy of those involved. I'll let you draw your own conclusions on the story. So down in the rolling foothills of southern Alberta is an alternative outreach school where I was lucky enough to be invited to teach my art class, which I linked to mental health. I was a day late getting there because of the proximity. So I missed an important orientation <laughs> about what would be the toughest class of high school students I had ever encountered. Fortunately, the next morning, I got a quick five-minute update. And I was told, just be careful of Keith. He's as big as you are, Rob. And, and that's saying something in itself. But they gave me permission to ask him to leave if he were to disrupt the class. Although it's even unlikely he'll even show up. Now the class I teach is very simple. We start with a simple piece of paper and a pencil. And the students start drawing away and it just really gets them engaged and relaxed. And I'm always supported by mental health professionals and addiction counselors. And in this case, because it's an outreach school, they cater to people who have had serious trauma in their lives. Many with substance abuse issues, many have been abused, some without parents, but all with mental health issues. So I rely heavily on the volunteers that work with me, and the principal in this case, who is a trained psychologist and the uh, local social worker who attends most of these classes in this particular school. And it allows us not to just work with a class, but to work with each individual. On this particular day, three individuals come to mind. We have Allison who is sitting more or less right here. And Allison is the prettiest girl in the community. And I can say that politically correctly because the social worker said she is the prettiest girl in the community. Unfortunately, she gets attention for all the wrong reasons. In the back is Paul, and Paul is the shyest kid in the class and speaks to nobody. And then over here is Catherine, and she likes to call herself Cat. And what I liked about Catherine is that, I don't know if like's the right word, I identified with Catherine. Catherine was the most outspoken. She had a friendly style about her, and you would have said she's the most normal in the room. Okay, maybe not the right word. She seems the most balanced. Ironically, she had the longest list of mental health issues. She'd been taken away from her fa abusive family when she was young. She was a cutter, so she self-mutilated. And she had multiple suicide attempts. That's not what I identified with her. Uh, she had a much more terrible life than I do, did. But she had this iron curtain that you couldn't see through. And in the mental health world, the one thing I've learned is finding those people who, who hide well behind their skin is the biggest challenge. Because we can take care of those who are high on the radar, but we don't get to see the Catherines. So I was a bit mean when I was growing up. 
So the class is pretty simple, as I mentioned, and it started off fairly well. And I'm glad to say that in the morning, things went well, and at lunch break, the teacher, the principal, the um, mental health and addiction counselor, and I and my volunteer, we debriefed, and they basically all said, no, Rob, they're engaged. There's a growing level of trust, and that's basically what you're looking for when you're working with high school students who really this is their last stop to graduate. And you want to make sure you're doing some good. So the afternoon session starts, and we're just getting underway, and guess who walks in? Keith. Now, as a big person, I can tell you, big people are intimidated by other big, big people, especially those whose shoulders don't fit through the door. <laughs> Keith walks in, in the middle of our afternoon session, having not been there for the morning, and the middle desk seems to just empty, and he sits down at his designated spot, and he's got this big brown bag, and so he sits down, and he opens the bag, and he reaches in, and takes out his double Big Mac. Now don't ask me how I know what a double Big Mac looks like. <laughs> He's halfway through, and the smell is everywhere, and the class is done. <sighs> so I'm trying to think, what do I say to this young silverback, Hugh? Uh, so I, I, I try not to let my fear, I, apparently you can't let them see your fear, right? So I lean over and I just say, you must be Keith. You know, maybe you could just take your lunch into the cafeteria and you're welcome to join us. You miss the morning, you know, we're already underway. Well, you could have heard a pin drop. All that trust. All that time with the other students, Allison, Paul, the shy kid, Kat, they were all on board. <sighs> Keith looks up at me. He grabs the half-eaten double Big Mac, puts it back in the wrapper, puts it back in the brown bag, and he puts it under the chair. And then he sits up, and man, this guy sits up. Right? And he's looking at me, and he says, so, what are we doing? Well, I look over at this social worker, and she's like, you know, it's your show, buddy. So I'm like, so discombobulated, which, by the way, is a very big word for me. <laughs> then I mentioned doctors and travelers. I'm a high school dropout four times. So being discombobulated. I just spat out something that wasn't even on the script, approved by all these Alberta Health Mental Health Addiction people because they like to keep me on script. I said, well, we're just drawing our dreams. Keith looks down at the sheet of paper. One sheet of paper, pencil in front of every kid. He looks down at the sheet of paper, slams his big paw down, and he just takes the pencil and he outlines the hand, just like this. Just like we've all done many times. And no sooner had he done that, he starts writing stuff at each finger. In this finger he writes, I want to teach Cree in China. In this finger, he writes, I want to coach hockey. In this finger, he writes, I want to graduate. I want to get a job, and I want to get out of Dodge. In 30 seconds, this guy had all his dreams lined up. Well, no sooner had he done this, all the students are inspired, and they're drawing their hand, and they're writing out their dreams. It was fantastic. So I learned later, Keith probably had lost all authority figures and adults who would speak back to him. So apparently he had a little bit of trust coming from this 300 bound, very gray silver back. <laughs> Allison, who is the girl who is most attractive, she was drawn away and drawing away. 
And Catherine, somebody leaned over to Catherine because she, they thought she'd be the most to pick up the conversation. What are you drawing, Cat? Cat said, I want to go camping. What we learned is she probably hadn't had a solid family experience since she was a kid. So although camping, given that area in southern Alberta, would have been a natural for most people, for her, going camping was the best thing she could imagine. Keith turns around to Catherine and says, I go camping every week, weekend. Why don't you come with me? Cat turns to Keith, when? Keith, a little bit nervous. <laughs> Saturday, let's go Saturday. <laughs> they created an instant peer bond, which what I've learned in the mental health world is very important for young adults. I go over to Allison, and I, and I ask her what she's drawn, this terrific image. Well, she's drawn herself riding a unicycle in the most spectacular jingle dress flying over a powwow. And those of you who are familiar with that culture will know that's a great scene. And so what I was told later was that although she was very attractive and had attention for all the wrong reasons, wanting to be in a beautiful jingle dress and flying over the powwow in a unicycle meant she wanted attention but for the right reasons. To be linked to her culture, to be linked to her community, and to have a cool talent. Paul, the shyest kid in the class, never speaks to anybody, says, well, I can teach you how to ride a unicycle. I have two. <laughs> well, nobody knew this was his favorite hobby because he'd never spoken up. But because of Keith and his energy and his inspiration, and because of Kat sharing what she wanted, and Keith wanting to go camping with Kat, and Kat wanting to go with Keith, and Allison now sharing that she wants to ride a unicycle over the powwow, Paul, the shyest kid in the universe, has now offered to teach the prettiest girl in the community how to ride a, a unicycle. She turns to Paul. When? <laughs> Saturday. Oh my gosh. This was the most amazing series of events. A source of inspiration that came from the group. They took over the class. All the students started solving each other's dreams. Turns out one of the students' mothers was a jingle dress seamstress, award winning. It just went from one to the other. Afterwards, debriefing with the principal, social worker, volunteers, the principal used the word epiphany for all of us, teachers, social workers, uh, students, certainly I identify with it. My wish for you is you find that source of inspiration, whatever it is. Thank you.